Hey, it's Sparky Pete in Liverpool in the isolation wing of Peacock Towers today. I'm just going to take you through a perspective fold current. Um, perspective fold current, in a nutshell, is the maximum amount of current you're going to get under fault conditions. And the reason why we need to know that is because we need to make sure that the electrical installation, particularly, we're generally talking about the protective devices, can handle that level of fault current. It's the higher of the of two things. It's the higher of the short circuit current, the PSCC, respective short circuit current, or the PEFC, the respective earth fault current. So it's the higher of those two values is the respective fault current. We generally get the highest fault current between the line and neutral. In this particular installation, um, the the line and neutral and the earth conductor are all 16 mil. So, and the thing is as well with um, if it's a TNCS installation, the um, an earth fault current is effectively turned into a short circuit current because when those two conductors, uh, the neutral and the earth, I'm talking about, when they come back to the incoming position, obviously it's one and the same thing. So, I mean, the only thing I don't know whether it's, it's theoretical, but if you had a load of structural steelwork and gas pipes and loads of parallel paths back to earth, then it's possible that you could get a prospective earth fault current higher than your prospective short circuit current. I mean, through a three, through a three phase system, uh, your perspective, your, your highest fault current would always be the consideration of what would happen if the three line conductors were connected together. I mean, that's a separate thing. Um, let's go ahead and, and take the test and talk a little bit further. So, I'm selecting prospective fault current. Something to emphasise is the fact that it's obviously a live test. And so, I've got my GS38 approval leads that I'm going to use. Now, there's another little clip about uh, GS38. So, let's um, let's set the meter. Well, we've got the meter set on PFC. It's shown as less than 55 volts, because obviously at the moment it's not connected to the supply. Now, I'm going to try and... I'm going to do an extra pair of hands here. I'm going to take the value. So there we go, 240, 1.11 kA. Now I've had less than that before, and as I've said in another clip, when we do these one-shot tests, it's possibly best not to do them as a one-shot test, but maybe just to make at least one other confirmation. So let's go again on that one. There we go, 1.1. So what I would also do, I mean, I'm not going to do it now because uh, I'm, I'm holding the, the phone with one hand and doing the test with the other. But what we would also do there is we do, uh, what we've just taken is our prospective short circuit current between line and neutral. The next test I would do is between this line conductor and the um, earthing terminal with the earthing conductor connected. Now that's talked about in um, the ZE test, but it's the opposite. The earth, we want the earthing conductor to be in the earthing terminal because it's that way with all our possible paths to earth together that we're going to get the highest prospective fault current and that's what we're interested in. Now what do we do with that? Um, we're going to compare that with um, information that's in GN3. Interestingly what it what it says in the uh, a new appendix in BS767 when it talks about prospective fault current and um, what it says that is if you know the uh, fault current in a given you know distribution area uh, that you um, you wouldn't need to necessarily even take this test. What I've often said in classes is that taking a prospective fault current value in these circumstances is a bit of a nonsense because what we're hoping and what we're verifying is that these protected devices can handle that level of fault current. Now if we look at hopefully you can see six that's six thousand in the little rectangle it means that that's 60898 per year can take, take 6 kA. And we've got, you know, one or thereabouts, haven't we? So uh, those breakers are easily able to um, take that level of fault current. Um, generally with circuit breakers like that, we've got um, we've got 6 kA or 10 kA. Now there's more to say about that. Um, some of you might like to um, check out GN3 and look at what ICN and ICS values. There's more to say about that, but I don't want to complicate matters uh, at the moment. The other thing to, to realise is that... Um, now, it used to give specific values in, in GN3. Um, but what it says now is it says this thing about... If the measured value of prospective fault current appears to exceed the fault current rating for the equipment or protective device, 
Further consideration must be given to the current limiting effect of any upstream protected devices on the ability uh, for the source of supply to deliver the indicated prospective full current. Now, generally, we could say that you know we, we could go up to the uh, maximum braking capacity of the of the main fuse, if you like, you know. So that effectively means in this situation. Well, let's take let's take a look at the value. Oh, we got eighty eight three. If we look at the um, GN three, the, the protective device that I've got here, which is an eighty eight three. Now, whether it's a type one or type two, it doesn't actually say on it. But either way, we're either talking you know sixteen kA or thirty one point five kA, and we're getting one kA. You know, so. We're well and truly in the clear, aren't we, on this one? Um, we've got a maximum prospective fault current of, you know, 1KA or thereabouts. And actually, we could uh, if effectively go up to sort of 16KA. Um, what was the value? 16K or 31.5KA. So generally, with uh, a domestic installation, it's not an issue. Generally, most single-phase installations, it's not an issue. The only time you might get a problem for your average contract if, if you're right on top of... Uh, the substation or you say you're doing some small commercial work and again you're right on top of the substation you might get values that cause you to think well like I say you might then be thinking well hang on a minute you know I've gone above my 6ka for my breaker or my 10ka and then you might be thinking well you know I need to think about what the main fuse can handle so so um, any constructive criticism as always appreciated um, because nobody knows everything and there's always more to say.